countries develop in different ways and at different rates, but at what cost? previous video I spoke about the three aspects of development and we said that we can use these aspects of development to measure how developed a country is and then we call these aspects of development indicators of development. In this video we will be looking at the three main indicators of development and a few things that go along with each one of them. economic indicator of development. Within this indicator of development I will be talking about GDP, GDP per capita and purchasing power parity. GDP stands for gross domestic product and it can be quite a difficult thing to wrap your head around. Basically the definition of GDP or gross domestic product is the value of goods and services that are produced within a country in one year. And this sounds straightforward, but what does it actually mean? So in a country, whenever a finished product is sold, it is counted towards that country's GDP. For example, let's think of the United States of America. Every laptop that they make and manufacture in America that is sold to American citizens is counted towards America's GDP. But even if I bought a laptop from the United States of America, that money would still be counted towards their GDP because that's where the product was made. So when we are importing goods from other countries, we are contributing to their GDP. And when other people buy products from our country, they are contributing to our GDP. Essentially, the value of all of these goods is added up and we can see what the GDP is for that year in a specific country. In 2018, the gross domestic product for South Africa was 368.3 billion US dollars. It is important to note that GDP and GDP per capita, which we're going to do next, is all represented in US dollars. This just standardizes everything for all countries and makes it easier to draw comparisons. The second way of determining the economic development of a country is looking at that country's GDP per capita. The term per capita essentially means per person. Now we just learned what GDP is. So GDP per capita basically just means that if we were to divide the entire GDP amongst the population, what would each person get? The way to calculate GDP per capita is to take the total GDP of that country divided by that country's total population. Let's work through an example. If I asked you to calculate the GDP per capita of Lesotho, I would need to give you their GDP value as well as their population value and you would then go and plug it into the formula. Remember our formula is GDP per capita equals GDP divided by the total population. The GDP value that we have for Lesotho at this point in time is 2.639 billion US dollars. That would go at the top of your fraction. The current value that we have for Lesotho's population is 2.233 million people. This value would go at the bottom of your fraction. Pop that into your calculator and you'll get an answer of 1181.81. Now remember, GDP and GDP per capita is measured in US dollars. So our unit over there needs to be US dollars. So ultimately the GDP per capita for Lesotho would be 1181.81 US dollars. GDP per capita is just an indication of how well a country is doing economically. In general, the higher the GDP per capita, the more developed that country is. The third concept under the economic indicator of development is the term called purchasing power parity. Purchasing power parity is basically the money that would be needed to purchase the same product in different countries. For example, The 
this candle. This exact same candle could exist in the United States of America. This exact same candle could exist in Australia. It exists here in South Africa. So basically, how much money would I have to spend on this candle in South Africa? How much money would I have to spend on this candle in America? And how much money would I have to spend on this candle in Australia? That is purchasing power parity. And one economist likes to call this the Big Mac Index. The Big Mac Index helps us determine whether currencies across different countries are at a correct level. We are taking the same product and comparing how much money we would need across different countries to purchase that exact same product. For example, a Big Mac in America could be $2, whereas that exact same Big Mac could be $4 in Japan. It is the same product, but the purchasing power of different currencies means that the same product is going to be worth different values in different countries. Let's move on to social indicators of development. Remember with social indicators of development, we are looking at the general welfare of that community. We are looking at their quality of life and their well-being. How healthy are they? How safe are they? How happy are they? Three common social indicators of development are life expectancy, infant mortality and literacy rate. And I'm going to unpack these for you. Life expectancy refers to the average age people in a certain country can expect to reach. Now remember, life expectancy is an average. A general trend is that people in LEDCs, or less economically developed countries, have a lower life expectancy, whereas people in MEDCs, or more economically developed countries, have a higher life expectancy. Often life expectancy is tied to the quality of medical care in each country. Places with a higher life expectancy generally have better healthcare facilities, whereas places with lower life expectancies generally have poorer healthcare facilities. Infant mortality refers to the number of babies per 1,000 live births that die within their first year of life or at birth. Again, this is often linked to healthcare facilities. Places with a high infant mortality rate, meaning that more babies die, generally have poorer healthcare facilities. Whereas places with a lower infant mortality rate, meaning that fewer babies die, generally have better healthcare facilities. The third social indicator of development is literacy rate. Education is a very good indicator in terms of seeing how developed a country is. Literacy rate refers to the percentage of the population who are over the age of 15 who can read and write. MEDCs generally have a higher literacy rate, whereas LEDCs generally have a lower literacy rate. The third and final indicator of development that we'll be talking about today is the environmental indicator of development. People depend on natural resources and the environment to become wealthy and to live a comfortable life. Earth's population is growing very rapidly. More people means that more resources are going to be depleted and this ultimately causes more damage to the environment. Some examples of environmental indicators are the percentage of polluting gases in the atmosphere, a drop in fish stocks in the oceans, looking at the quality of water in rivers and lakes, looking at how many non-renewable resources were used, all of these things give us an indication as to how quickly our resources are being depleted. At the beginning of this video, you may have thought that countries who are doing very well economically and socially must be top ranked in terms of development. But often development comes at the expense of the environment. We cannot truly say that a country is well developed if the environment is so damaged. Even if a country has the highest GDP and amazing social indicators of development, if they have used up all of their natural resources and caused such damage to the environment, can we truly say that they are well developed? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Let's quickly recap all of this knowledge with Sharky's bite-sized lesson. Are we ready? Are we ready? Today we looked at three indicators of development. Firstly, we looked at the economic indicator of development and covered GDP, GDP per capita, and purchasing power parity. 
Then we looked at social indicators of development and covered life expectancy, literacy rates, and infant mortality rates. Lastly, we looked at the environmental indicator of development and thought about how often development comes at the expense of the environment. We learned that GDP stands for gross domestic product and refers to the value of goods and services produced in that country in a year. We also learned about GDP per capita, which is the GDP divided by the total population. Purchasing power parity looks at the value of the same product across different countries to compare currencies. Life expectancy refers to the average age people can expect to reach. Infant mortality refers to the number of babies who die per 1,000 live births. And literacy rate refers to the percentage of the population over the age of 15 who can read and write. Some environmental indicators on development could be looking at the quality of water and looking at how fish stocks have been depleted. Poor Sharky. And then we ask this key question. Is development at the expense of the environment really worth it? Can we truly say that a country has developed if they have completely lost all of their natural resources and caused such extensive damage to the environment? And that is it for our development indicators. Please give this video a thumbs up if you found it helpful. Please subscribe to my channel and I will see you in my next video. Bye!